Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. My name is Martin and today I've got Abraham. How you doing Abraham? I'm doing well brother. God is good. God is good. Good to see you man. Good to see you. Yeah, we, we've done actually four part series with Emil. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through devotion and today we'll be speaking about biblical masculinity. Yeah. 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 It's and a hot topic today. It is. Yeah. And I just wanted to say as well, because I've been going through what you and Emil were doing and and the way in which you expounded on the biblical scriptures and expounded on why these things are important and why they're important in the life of a Christian. Like one of the things that tends to happen is people look at Christianity as an ideological thing and they look at it, it's mental and is as long as you believe it in your mind, that's all it needs to be. It doesn't really have anything to do with reality. And the good thing about expanding on these things like the Bible, the Word of God, fasting, prayer, it brings the Christian message into reality. And that's a very important thing. That's what we really need to um, understand as Christians. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it's one thing like we do live in the age of information. Yeah. So we do tend to treat Christianity that way as well. Uh, but we forget the practical side of Christianity, right? Which is yeah. pretty important. Yeah. Um, and we see a lot of examples, right? Don't love with words, love with your deeds, love with your actions, mm -hmm. and so on, right? Um, so th there's a lot of that. Uh, but before we get into the topic, and I think we'll be spending around three parts yeah. on, on this on yeah. this uh, topic. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty good. Uh, but we're going to be looking at it from a biblical perspective, of course, right? Of course, because um, masculinity is becoming popular again and right? controversial, very yeah. controversial at yeah. the moment. And and obviously it's it's rising up and it's it's voicing itself. And the reason why is because of the feminist movement. Mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. uh, Christians obviously are well, biblical Christianity um, doesn't agree with some of the you know feminist. Um, ideas mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and when this modern masculinity is coming out people are thinking well i gotta choose a side exactly yeah instead yeah. of looking at it say well what's the biblical perspective mm -hmm. on both sides exactly yeah exactly and that's where that's where we get um all the confusion because boys today young men today even in the church they believe they need to pick a side and both these sides are polar opposite yeah and so they either go from one extreme to the other, or they just end up deluding themselves completely. And, you know, they they medicate themselves, they self-medicate either with drugs, alcohol, joining a game, whatever it is, even, even suicide. So we look at the suicide rate with men, and we see that it's much higher than with women. Because they're lost, because they're confused, they're restless, and they're frustrated. Because they're not living out the masculine nature that God has designed for them. And they're not doing it in a biblical way. Amen. Yeah. So basically saying, let men be men. Let men right? be men, let women be women, and let God be God. That's the oh, way it works. <laughs> that's great, right? So we just got to live out the way God designed us to be. Amen. Right? Amen. And obviously, the modern ideology mm. of masculinity is having a different perspective than the biblical understanding of what a man is to be. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they take it more of a naturalistic, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a sign of evolution and this is how man Has ought evolved, to live yeah. and, you know, how he needs to think and this is how he can find a mate mm -hmm. and so on. But then when you look at the teachings of Jesus and in the New Testament, we don't see that in it. No, no, not at all. Yeah. Um, and this is, again, what we're talking about, the ideologies of the world, the wisdom of the world is contrary to the message of the and it's not just the wisdom of the world in the naturalistic sense, even when you look at it spiritually with Islam, with Buddhism, with um, even modern day Ju Judaism, it's very contrary to the wisdom of God that we, it's laid out in the word of God. And so what we need to do as men is we need to draw a line in the sand and say, how are we going to, how are we going to walk this road as men? Mm. Are we going to do it by the way of the world? and by the world's wisdoms and those ideologies, or are we going to do it based on what God has designed us to be and how he's laid, out, laid it out in his word? Yeah. Right? Um, and this is one of the things that I've noticed, and you'll see it 
over the last three decades, I think, the way that the world tries to redefine certain things, redefine words, redefine concepts, like we saw that they've done that with marriage. Yeah. So marriage always has been historically and biblically between one man and one woman. That's a news flash. Right. Yeah. News flash. <laughs> but then we've seen through human history that we've tried to redefine that. Yeah. And not just in the last three decades, altogether since the beginning, since the fall. Um, you know, polygamy began when men had several wives, and that's not something according to God's plan either. Um, but then in the last few decades, the world's like, you know what, let's redefine this thing, because why should it only be one man and one woman? Why can't it be a man and a man, or a woman and a woman? Yeah. Or, you know, and they start to stretch that line, and they redefine it. Or, I mean, obviously, since we're speaking about the topic, one man and a wife and a mistress and a exactly. girlfriend and so on. Exactly. So just because you have this opportunity to mm. choose mm. and there's plenty of options out there for you, yeah. why not have them all, yeah. right? So, I mean, modern masculinity, it's not something that is new under the sun. Mm -hmm. right? e Ecclesiastics it speaks about it. There's nothing new nothing. under the sun. It just comes under a different banner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why... We have to be so cautious, walk in discernment, walk in the Spirit of God, because even what we may hear from certain preachers may not necessarily be biblical. Mm. And in the modern church, with the modern mindset, we look at, okay, how are we integrating and trying to, we call this syncretism, right? Like, how are we taking the world's ideologies, imprinting it and impressing it in the church, and then repackage it as Christianity. So we've taken the feminist ideals at times in certain churches, we repackage it as Christianity and say to our young boys and our young girls, this is what Christian masculinity yeah. is. It's not. Uh, yeah, the yeah. feminism you mean. The feminism, yeah. yeah. Or on the other end, we have, you know, the red pill kind of ideology where it's, you know, um, men should be aggressively strong. And yeah. by aggressive, I mean in an unbiblical way, you know, high tempered, um, you know, letting your testosterone get ahead of you, um, you know, cigar, smoking, beer, true, alcohol, true. all that kind of, yeah. you know. So. I mean, with a biblical sense, we see so many passages mm -hmm. speaking about having self control, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We don't live under our emotions or our under our urges, right? We live according to the word of God. That's right. And many right. young Christian men out there are falling for this. Yeah. Thinking that, oh, maybe this is how God actually created me to be. Mm -hmm. Right? God created me to be this person that's going to go out there, create wealth, you know, um, be popular, mm -hmm. have a, be that quote unquote high value man. Exactly. Exactly. And then, but when you look at the scripture, it speaks about being the opposite of mm -hmm. that. Being yeah. high value in the spirit. In the spirit, amen. Rather yeah. than in the flesh. Oh, yeah. And we know, like, uh, we look at the word of God, we look at the men of God, we look at um, certain characters, they were wealthy. Mm. So people always bring up King David or Abraham, and they were wealthy men, Yeah. right? But then there are countless men who were not. There are True. way more figures in the Bible who lived probably in the poverty line, but spiritually speaking, rich and wealthy. Yeah. And they they viewed God as their ultimate goal. They viewed the will of God as their prize. Yeah. And so that's where biblical masculinity needs to recalibrate and where men need to start esteeming the things of God as above the things of the world. True. There's this idea that having that kind of lifestyle Mm. brings success mm -hmm. but then when you look at the life of jesus which is by the way guys every man's example yeah right? if if you're a man the your ultimate example is jesus himself if you look at the lifestyle of jesus example matthew chapter 8 yeah the guy comes to him jesus i want to follow you jesus says foxes have hole birds have nests yeah but the son of man has no, no place to lay his head exactly that's not a sign, in, in a modern sense, that's not a sign of a person that wants to be influential no. or successful. No. But then when you look back, 
the most influential person in the history of mankind was the person that didn't have a place to lay his head. Mm -hmm. He didn't have this crazy physique, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, Paul, Paul would say, you know, this spiritual um, exercise, spiritual pursuit is mm -hmm. more imp mm -hmm. important than my physical, you know, exercise or my physical needs. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you look at that, it doesn't, it doesn't match with the message of today. No, no, not at all. Because the funny thing is, I, you know, as I was actually coming here, I, I was reminded of a few YouTube channels, mm -hmm. okay? And these guys were out there saying, you got to work out, you're going to look great, and girls yeah. will follow you, right? Yeah. You're going to get a lot of girls. And by the end of that video, this guy proceeds to say, hey, by the way, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. If anyone wants to become a Christian, accept Jesus as your Lord and yeah. your Savior. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, hold on a sec. You're giving them an image yeah. of of a person that's not Jesus. A womanizer. Yeah. yeah. If you want to lead them to Jesus, then Jesus becomes their example, mm. especially for men. And we're not here, by the way, guys. We're not saying, hey, go just eat junk food. Don't worry about your, your physique. Uh, do what you like with it. Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's... It's the other way around. Take care of yourself, right? This is the body that God has given you. But that doesn't become more important than your spiritual no, life. No. And that doesn't make you manlier just because you might be twice as big as you are now. Mm. To be honest, the real men out there are the ones that are waking up every day, going out there to provide for their families. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not the person that is looking great and going there from one girl to another to another. Mm -hmm. That's not something that Christ has called us to be as men. Of course. And that is where we're losing sight and we're losing the next generation because like we said, they're falling into those two camps mm -hmm. where it's this macho minded um, red pill kind of ideal of yeah. masculinity. And so what they do, they start prizing um, and taking pride in the working of their flesh. So they become very self-seeking. They become yeah. very, oh, how can I be my best me? How can I I'll work out, even study and, you know, be influential academically or whatnot. Now, these aren't necessarily anti-God. It's not yeah. an anti-God thing to work out. It's not an anti-Christ um, thing to educate, pursue, yourself. to educate yourself. But it is anti-Christ and it is anti-the gospel it is anti God's will when that becomes the idol of your heart. Yeah. And it does. We've seen a lot of these men that they start going to the gym and they're in there six, seven hours a day. And that's all they do. They're, they're barely providing for their families anymore. It becomes their addiction and their obsession because they want the best physique possible. And for what purpose? Is that to yeah. glorify God? I mean, I know a, a, a friend of mine who. Um, started taking steroids and, he's, and I'm like, why are you doing that? I mean, what's the purpose of that? And he said, well, I want to glorify God in my body. I'm like, no, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Um, that's not the way you glorify God in your body. It's a very it's, different, sorry, it's a very different yeah. definition to what Paul said. I want to magnify God in my body. Yeah. You know? it, it, it's crazy how desperate sometimes we can become. And not only about the topic of masculinity, mm. it's crazy how sometimes we, we get desperate enough to try and twist the word of God to match our lifestyle. Mm. Right? And, and one, of the, one of the things, right, they will bring up some passages and we'll take it out of context just to show that I can put myself first yeah. and, you know, get the best out of myself. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because when I first, you know, got introduced to it, I'm like, who would actually fall for this? Mm. You know, it, it's like one of those ads, you know, how it asks like sequel of questions. Yeah. And a person's listening, just like, that is me. It's talking about me, right? It's like, are, are you the person that's sitting in their parents' basement? Is that you? Yeah, that's me. Would you like to be an entrepreneur? You want to mm. be rich, wealthy? Are you might be even watching some adult film? Would you rather have a real girlfriend, right? Yeah, yeah. Is your mom making a sandwich? 
but guess what? Now your girlfriend can make you a sandwich. Yeah, yeah. You know, this they whole target idea. the vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they get the whole idea that, hey, you're going to get home and this lady is going to be making a sandwich. And this is an example of your mm. manhood. Make, I mean, you, make yourself a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really misses the mark. It does. Right? It, absolutely it really does. misses the mark. Uh, so the three things that I would like to get your opinion on, mm. um, often uh, modern masculinity uh, speaks about wealth, self-seeking, mm -hmm. fame, and attractiveness. Yeah. Could you look at the biblical perspective on all these four things? Yeah, so this is what we've been kind of talking about, that de delineation. So we're looking at drawing a line in the sand and saying, this is what the world says about masculinity, or like, let's say the higher form of masculinity, because what we're seeing today is this tension. We have the higher form and then the low form where... We're trying to feminize our men. We want the young men to become more feminine, become yeah. more timid. And so a lot of what we see with the high form, where it's the macho -ness, it's a reaction to that. Yeah. So look at how they're trying to feminize the men. And they say, no, we don't want that. So we're fighting against it. We go to the polar opposite. And that's where we're going to land. That's yeah. where we're going to stay. And so the high form of it says... Wealth is where it kind of begins. As soon as you're wealthy, then you have this power and this control and you'll be able to fulfill these, these other things. In order to be wealthy, you need to seek the best for yourself. Yeah. Then you need that fame because once you have fame, you have a lot more popularity and you have more of a, an inf a sphere of influence. Yeah. You're an important you're a leader, impact, you know? uh, yeah. personality, exactly. I would say. Yeah. You're, you're a leader in the public sphere. Yeah. Right? And then... Obviously, it helps to be attractive and to work True. on that attraction. Like, like both of us here. Very attractive, guys. <laughs> um, so, but like, it's, it's, it's interesting because like, even if you're not the most attractive person, well, what do you do? You go to the gym, you bulk up, you, you know, trim the, the beard and yeah. the hair and yeah. try to make yourself as attractive as possible. If you have hair, that is. <laughs> I don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we look at that and we're like, okay, that's not something new. Right, we look at it as though it's something new. Like you said, you know, in Ecclesiastes, there's nothing new under the sun. We've seen it biblically, historically, that men and women have both tried to do this. Yeah. Have both tried to esteem themselves above the things of God and what their role in in life is. The role of a man is not to become this leader and this famous public um public model or figure. The biblical role of a man is firstly to provide for the needs of your family. So if you don't have a family, you're working at becoming a provider of needs. So what that means is you have parents well, or you have people in your life, family and friends that you can work on, you know, providing and helping their needs. Right. When we look at um, first Timothy chapter six, and I actually want to go there. Cool. So you for, want me to read it for you? Yeah, let's, okay. let's do it. First Timothy 6, verse 6 to 9. It talks about the man in his character being one who doesn't look to the needs of his own, his own needs, but looks to providing for those around him Yeah, in his family, in cool. his household. I'll read it for you. Now, godliness with contentment is a great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts. I think this is where, you know, chasing women mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Which drawn men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Yeah. For which some have strayed from the faith. So this is pretty, pretty serious. Mm -hmm. In their greediness and pierce themselves through many sorrows. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we're looking at the ideal of the masculine, macho, red pill men, we look at wealth as being the driving force of their masculinity. So they use their masculinity to become wealthy so that they can fulfill the lust of their flesh as, as Paul listed it out. And the word of God saying, that's what you shouldn't do. That's the warning is don't do that. Don't pursue that. 
I mean, if you become wealthy by God's grace, then you use that wealth for the needs of others. I so, mean, it says that in the same chapter, yeah, right? In, he commands the, the rich to be rich in mm -hmm, giving. In giving, yeah. right? And when Jesus says it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, he wasn't exaggerating that it's very hard because you fall into many snares. You delude yourself into um, feeling a sense of security in your assets, in your richness, in your wealth, uh, instead of depending on like the, the man God. that you know uh, put his bonds down and he That's built right. bigger ones. And God says today, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be asking for yeah. your life. I'll read that for you. Yeah. Uh, it says, command those who are rich in the present age not to be haughty, mm -hmm. nor to trust in uncertain riches. Yeah. But in the living God, so we're talking. We were just talking about that. Yeah. Who gives us richly all things to enjoy? Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, mm. storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Exactly. Amen. So Paul is emphasizing on eternal life. On being rich in your good work, mm -hmm. uh, good works, and that to God is more valuable than you chasing wealth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, one of the dangers, and what happened in um, the early church and in a lot of the churches of Paul is they took a lot of what Paul was saying, and they were misconstruing it, and they went to the other end of it where they said, "Oh, we don't need to work at all." Because wealth is dangerous. That's not what Paul was talking about. He wasn't saying money itself is dangerous. It's that desire and that wealth, um, that desire for, to be rich mm. that is dangerous. The love of money. Not having money is dangerous. So yeah. some of the men and some of the people were saying, well, I'm not going to work. And then what happens? You don't provide for your family. So there has to be this, this discernment. Mm. Walk circumspectly. So we're not pursuing wealth. But we have to provide for our family. True. So, just which is literally the chapter before, yeah, right? chapter before First Timothy, First Timothy five, 5 8. and and Paul is pretty serious about it. He's saying that the person who doesn't provide for their family is worse mm. than a um, non-believer. Yeah. yeah. So we're called to provide for our family. Yeah. But we're not seeking the riches of this world no. because, as Paul said, you came, you brought nothing into this world. And neither are you going to take anything with you. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and I think, I think it was when I became a father that I truly understood it from a practical standpoint. That what's my priority here? I have kids. I have children. I have three of them. All right, and they give you a lot of work, but they do. You look at these three children. And you're like, I have a responsibility here with my wife to raise them in the ways of the Lord. I have a responsibility to drive into their minds that the most important thing are the, is the kingdom of God, mm. right? I'm not going to drive that point in if I am telling them that the most important thing in the world is to get a really, really good job, get a really good education, get wealthy, and then buy your parents a house. You know, you'd like that. But, <laughs> but um, or, you know, you're all like pursue these things as the ultimate goal of your life. No, I'm like pursue the kingdom of and, and his righteousness, and all these things God will add to you. So what happens is when we're pursuing wealth, we delude ourselves into thinking we're providing for ourselves, and then one day you conk out, die, and you take nothing with you, mm -hmm. rather than storing up treasures in heaven that Jesus has commanded us to True. do. In, in bringing that point, you've basically shown how modern masculinity is basically the opposite of what Complete. Jesus was teaching. Complete opposite. Jesus taught, seek the kingdom and God will provide for your needs. Mm -hmm. Modern masculinity is you're not going to get nowhere and God's not going to be helping you out. Mm. You chase your own dreams. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously there's a little tiny truth into that, right? Because we're called to work and to, you know, we, we spoke about it earlier, right? You're there to provide and, and so on. Mm. But it's not in the sense of that God is out of the picture. Yeah. And you're in the steering wheel. You're in control. Yeah. So if if it's not the influences, if it's not the modern masculinity, who's our example? Yeah, and this is where this is where we look at um, Jesus being the example, 
Jesus himself. But in saying that, you have real human examples as to who... Like, for example, Paul says to to the churches, he says, imitate me as I'm imitating Christ. So it's not something far-fetched. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. It's not far-fetched fetched where we're saying, oh, well, it's Jesus. He's God in flesh. I mean, you can't really attain that. Paul's saying, I have, by the Spirit of God, mm. by the power of God. I am walking as Christ has walked. Yes. And so if we look at Jesus as the model, and Paul was able to follow that, then we also need to follow that. And so there's these, these, this tension of the, the nature and character of Jesus, which we'll probably talk about as well later on, where, you know, he has the gentleness. Amen. But he also has the firmness. True. You know, he has this strength about him, but he also has grace and compassion. And so you're bringing these two tensions, right? And you're saying, as a man, yeah. I've got to walk as Christ has walked. Yeah. But it, it does remind me because... Um, and hopefully we speak about it in the in maybe in part two or three mm. is the perspective that these quote unquote masculine men have about women oh yeah. especially about women yeah. who obviously have a bad past yeah, yeah so yeah. We'll, we're gonna we'll, we're gonna touch on that yeah. that's that's um probably the most detrimental True. part of this whole thing in the way you view women in speaking about that sorry to cut you oh, off good. um since we're using Jesus as our ultimate example. Um, this is great in Philippians 2, mm -hmm. 5. Um, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, and this is good apologetics there, yeah, yeah. did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, something that modern masculinity goes mm -hmm. against, mm -hmm. taking the form of a bond servant, something modern masculinity goes against, and coming in the likeness of man, which also goes against modern masculinity. Yeah. Being God, taking the form of a servant, and coming and being incarnate, and being found in appearance as a man, mm -hmm. he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Yeah. Yeah. Modern masculinity, live your best life, enjoy it, get the best out of it. Jesus came to do the will of his Father, and even to the point of death, it says even the death of the cross. Mm. What I like about this is by Jesus obeying the Father, <clears throat> verse nine. This is the this is where we we can be encouraged to see what our reward is going to be. Mm. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him, and it continues on. Mm. Right? It's the idea that we live this life according to the will of God. Not to satisfy the desires of the flesh, which is basically what modern masculinity is, yeah. but actually to live out who God created us to be. Yeah. And then when the time comes, God himself will exalt the humble, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And which is what Jesus was teaching, right? Humble yourself. So it comes to that point where we get to see the fruit of our obedience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not that animalistic perspective of evolution and go just and fulfilling, grab it. fulfilling the needs of yeah. the flesh above all yeah and whether if if you have an option and and you can take it then by all means it's yours mm -hmm. claim it but that's not the biblical perspective no not at all and you said something there that's probably the most important part um where paul was speaking about the nature of jesus and the way in which he chose to present himself as a man in flesh the, the number one thing was he lived humbly before God. Mm. That's the first point. That's the first step. So if you want to learn how to be a true biblically masculine man, a man that is living out his role on this earth, that's your first step. Your first step is living humbly before God. Um, God says this in the book of Isaiah where he says, To this man will I look, to him who is humble and contrite and trembles at my word. So if we look at the Word of God and we say, okay, this is my starting point. In order for me to live out my role in this world and to fulfill what God has planned for me, I need to start here. Yeah, I need to be as Jesus was, humble. Cool. Humble before God. Since we're actually talking about it, mm. looking back now from our conversation, it definitely feels like the message that you have in the 21st century towards men is more backwards 
right? Way, yeah, than yeah, what yeah. you have in the eternal world. Yeah, it's not right? something new. It's yeah. not something new. We've we've said this over and, and over. And the funny thing is, they would tell you that the Bible is old, it's outdated, and the message that they're giving to the young men, this is what you need to do. Mm. This is basically the height of of our ideology, right? Mm -hmm. But then when you put both together, you're like, wait, biblical masculinity makes much more sense. It's much more productive. Mm. It's much more of a blessing yeah. in the life of the person as an individual within his marriage, mm -hmm. within his fatherhood a as a father and in ministry, which is a lot of things we will be touching in the next yeah. few parts. Yeah. So we're coming at a close, um, Abe. Mm. Do you have any final thoughts? Or if you want to summarize some of the things that we've spoken, that'd be great. Yeah. Um basically i think the most important thing we talked about that starting point of humility before god be careful as young men if you're like just coming out of puberty you know you're about you know 18 years old you have to be very careful who's molding you who your role models are and i think one of the issues is you look at these red pill men they're strong mm. right they look like they've got their life all together they look like they're self-made men and you're like, that's very appealing. Yeah. And you have to be so careful as to how they're influencing your mindset towards how you're going to live your life, how you're going to treat other people, how you're going to treat your the women in your life, right? I mean, most of these men would never treat their mothers the way that they treat sure. their their wives or their partners. Um, it's it's really really. And, and they won't even scary. speak about their their mothers the way they would no, speak absolutely about not, other, absolutely not. other women. This is one of those so, things with like, you know, even in the 90s with, you know, Tupac and these rappers. Yeah. The way they speak about their mothers versus the way they speak about yeah, the women in their in lives, their, you know. It's, yeah. you have to be very careful as to who you're letting in your head and who's shaping the way you view these things. Um, look to Christ. Look to what Christ has modeled for you in the masculine sphere. True. And, and see how... He was able to treat the people around him, how he did whatever it took um, to provide, spiritually speaking, firstly, for his bride, the church. And we're going to talk about that later on. Sure. And, yeah. and also notice before we finish the video that you might be looking at some of their points and you'll be like, well, that does sound biblical or that does sound true. And don't forget that if they want to sell you something, mm. they have to have a bit of truth in it. Well, right. this is one of the things, when you look at um, men like Andrew Tate, even Jordan Peterson, who I do respect in some sense. I do too. They've got, with Tate, for example, he's very outlandish. He, he goes out there. But he's got maybe 70% on truth. Yeah. But it's that 30% which is detrimental. Well, very he, scary. He'll, yes, he'll, well. take, he'll take a lot of truth from what God has revealed about men, about being... Um, about how God has created men to be strong and fierce and courageous. That's good. That's all true. But then he takes that 30% and that's where men are falling. They're Ooh. falling on their sword. So we have to be very careful there. Nice. So hopefully you've enjoyed part one. Um, yeah. And man, it's been on fire to be honest with you. Yeah, I enjoyed it, man. Yeah, can't wait to do part two and part three. God bless you, everyone, and enjoy your time.